Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Two years ago I started these two trees, my little cedar spirit tree and my witch's tree. The little cedar spirit tree is a sacred tree that grows on the north shore of Lake Superior. I'll show you some photos of the tree that inspired this bonsai. The little cedar spirit tree. The Ojibwe call it Mani Du Jizikans. The tree is an ancient Thuya occidentalis or white cedar. It grows on the north shore of Lake Superior and is likely over 500 years old. This tree is held sacred to the Ojibwe. To many it represents survival through the hardships of life. Despite its old age, it's less than 4 meters or 13 feet high. My witch's tree here is another Thuya occidentalis that's grown in a similar style. Let's go back now and look at the early beginnings of this tree. I'm going to style this cedar with more dead wood, so I'm going to create a playlist called The Witch's Tree for this one. I'm going to leave some stubs and then I'll decide if I want to keep them or not. So it's starting to clear out in here. And then we'll make a deadwood feature down the trunk line. There we go. I'm going to do some carving now in this area of the main trunk line. I've made the foliage as compact as I can get it at this point in time. So next I'm going to work on some deadwood features on the trunk. Down on the lower trunk, I've removed some major branches in the past here. And I think I want to carve those. I can join these two up and kind of bring out a deadwood feature. I even have one that I removed at the bottom down here, probably a root. So I can make the, a deadwood feature joining this scar to this one to this one. So I'll do that next and I'm going to try and make it a bit of a spiral scar. I've got my deadwood section extending all the way up to these dead branches, so it's looking pretty good. All the upper branches here have a nice curve to them as they curve skyward, except for this one. This one could use a bit of wire just to adjust it so it's vertical at the end. Now I'll try and bend the branch to get a nice upward curve to it. So here I go. Wow. Eventually this will be placed over top of a rock, so I want to keep the area directly underneath the trunk free of any roots. Okay, that should do it. I'll place some rocks on the surface to hold the tree in place until the roots get established in the pot. That's all the work I'll be doing today on my little cedar spirit tree and my witch tree. I've let both of these trees grow for two years unrestricted and now it's time to prune them back, kind of duplicating what nature does in that harsh environment on the North Shore of Lake Superior. So we'll be pruning them back and then letting them grow once again. I'll start by working on the witch's tree today in the bonsai zone. Here's a close-up of the trunk of the witch's tree and you can see there's some really good healing happening. So, you know, I strip back the uh, living tissue down to dead wood and then it's rolling over with new growth. You can see on the main part of the trunk here, it's rolling over with new growth here, up here. So it's healing really well and that's what I want. I want to kind of beat this tree back every year a couple of years and then let it recover and grow and then take it back again and by doing this over the years eventually I'll end up with this really ancient gnarly looking tree just like the uh, you know the witch's tree or the little cedar spirit tree in nature. This is the front of the tree that I picked last time it kind of shows the dead wood along the side and some of these scars on this side and the dead branches so I'm just having a look at the tree again. I've got some dead wood up here that looks quite nice. It's pretty
pretty cool view of the tree right there. I, I'm even though it doesn't show all that dead wood in the back, it does show some nice parts here. And the tree has a nice form to it there. The only reason I wasn't happy with the other front is that the trunk kind of curves and it's got a bit of undercut at the bottom here. I'll show you that close up. So there's a look at the trunk and you can kind of see how it it comes down and then it has sort of a almost a bend at the bottom and I don't know for what I'm after I think eventually this tree will be planted over top of a rock uh, just like you know the little cedar spirit tree is or you know to make a nice witch's tree to look like it's surviving on a rocky shore so this is the this is the front I picked now and you can see the base is quite quite nice in that view when I began this video I hadn't decided whether or not I should repot the tree and if I change the front to here, I definitely should repot it to kind of, you know, bring it in the proper position in the pot. And after two years, I'm sure the root system is, you know, plenty strong enough to do root pruning. You can see by all this vigorous top growth that the tree is really healthy. It uh, recovered really well from the first initial potting and styling. So I think I probably should repot the tree. And I don't know if I'll put it over top of a rock yet. Um, I may. It, it'll need a fairly large rock and it'll make the planting very heavy. I'll, I'll look for some rocks and see if I can kind of find a rock that would look suitable to plant this tree over. I have these two limestone rocks. This rock was collected by Alice Baker. She's a club member who passed away. Um, and this one was one I found free that someone uh, had put at the side of their curb. It was part of their rock garden at one time. So two really nice limestone rocks. Um, you know, this one you could plant a tree on here and have the roots coming out over the rock. And this one also, it could, uh, you know, you could fit a fairly good sized trunk and have the roots coming down, kind of flowing over the rock. So I think this rock is probably more suited for the the uh, little cedar spirit tree because the real tree or the tree in nature grows on top of kind of a rocky cliff like this. And this other rock is probably more suited for my witch's tree. You know, it's got a nice planting there and I can get a fairly big trunk on it and it'll have this nice root spread. Now, the other problem is I need a pot underneath this rock that's big enough to grow this planting in. So I'll have a look around for a suitable pot. I do have this large mica pot. It could make quite an interesting penging. Um, if I had the rock over to the one side and had this as water over here and land over here, it could be quite nice. It's a big pot, but this tree is going to grow really fast, the witch's tree. So I think that would be, that'd be a pretty nice arrangement, I think. This pot, the rock, and the witch's tree. I can't find a nice landscape pot for my little cedar spirit tree. I do have this one, which is a better pot than the one it's in. Here's the pot the little cedar spirit tree is in now. So to put it in this size pot, would be pretty good I think and I don't think I can fit this other rock in this pot I think it's too big well, actually I can so it might be a possibility to just start the roots growing over top of this rock and into this pot and then uh, you know find a slightly larger pot that's shallow later on so it would get those roots training in in this pot anyway so my other problem with planting this tree in my large mica landscape pot is soil. I, uh, I don't have a lot of soil mixed up and all the stores are closed so I can't buy new soil. I do have quite a pile of used soil that I could use and I might have to use that this spring. I'm going to start today by pruning back the top of the tree, getting it pruned back to the minimum amount of foliage 
that I can get that I still think the tree will live. So I'm going to take it, you know, quite far back. I have thought about planting one of these cedar trees in this pot that Shani sent me. But I think both of these trees are too small. They would look too insignificant in the pot. So I need something a bit larger for this pot or, you know, a group planting to make it, uh, you know, the trees to balance the pot. I've got the tree on the side bench now, so I can begin the pruning process. The styling of this witch tree will be similar to my cathedral type tops in my avatar grove planting. I'll have these branches going vertical and then all the smaller branches coming off of those. So I do have one shoot that's going vertical here and I'll want to keep that and all these branches coming off of it, I'll reduce them back as far as I can. So on this branch here, I've got some shoots way back on the branch so I can prune the whole end of this branch off. So here I go, just like that. So I'll just continue that approach, you know, taking my branches back as far as I can. There's one I can prune off here, like that. Shorten this one. Shorten this one. Always keeping some nice, healthy green foliage at the ends of your branches. So I think I have that main branch just roughly pruned up now, getting rid of all the really long shoots on it. So I'll move around now to this other branch out the back here. And we'll do the same thing on that. I'll just reduce it back to you know, as short as I can get it. Now this branch, I also want to grow it vertical, so I'm looking to see if there's some kind of a vertical leader on it, and, you know, nothing's really sticking out too much. There is, there is a branch here that kind of goes vertical, and that would, I, I don't know if you can see that, it, it's in here, right here. So this branch kind of comes up, and then it would go vertical at this point, so I would have to prune off this whole side over here fairly major cut but that would keep the tree compact and the crown kind of nice and compact also so I think I will I'm going to remove that branch and I've got to decide do I make some deadwood on there probably do because you know we want this tree to look really beaten back by the weather so here I go this is a fairly major cut done so you can see how much foliage I took off there, quite a bit. I think this is kind of my favorite kind of bonsai work is creating kind of replica trees of trees in nature. You know, witches trees and, you know, famous trees recreating them in miniature. I, I really like kind of doing that type of work. It's really fun. Now I'm going to uh, tackle this other branch. You can see it's growing fairly vertical here and I've got to make it more compact. So I want to reduce it down. It's, it's, you can see my other two branches are kind of at this height and I want this one at a similar height. I've got this really twisty branch on the inside which is pretty cool. That may be my new leader I think. I do have the branch out this one side so I could take it off to here and keep this branch off to the one side, which is not the strongest branch in the world, but I think that's what I'll have to do. So I'll get out the branch cutters for this one. All right, so here I go. I'm going to prune it back, keeping this one branch here, this other branch here. So I want to make a little bit of dead wood on top, so I'll give a bit of room for that. So I'll prune right here. Here I go done. That's a lot of foliage off the top. You can see now that the top of the witch's tree is looking much better. It's much more compact. It's got that vertical kind of cathedral branch style. So now I've just got to go in and do my finishing touches, refining it all, putting it back as tightly as I can get it, removing any branches I don't like, and then treating my deadwood. So I'll do that now. I'm going to come in and do a bit of pruning here. 
getting everything nice and compact. And I think that's got all the branch pruning done. Now I've got to come in and pinch kind of the profiles of the branches, you know, grabbing the end of the branch with my thumb and kind of pruning back to a rounded profile at the tips. Helps maintain that miniature kind of compact looking foliage so it doesn't become too loose and weepy looking. It also pinches all the tips of the branches so you get a lot of subdividing when the new branches start to grow in. So that's looking much better. Looks a little more miniature now. Here's the amount of material I removed from the top of the tree. Quite a bit. There's some good, you know, thick branches in there. Yeah, quite a bit. And that all grown since, you know, the last two years. I'm going to rotate the tree around. So somewhere here is the front that I had picked, the new front. So I'll just rotate it around. I'm not saying that's the only front. There could be many more. There's what was the back of the tree. It's got some nice deadwood up there. I do like that kind of transition here. Uh, there's kind of the deadwood side of the tree. Interesting. Coming back around to the former front of the tree, which still looks okay, but I think because this other branch is thicker, that's maybe why I like it as kind of the central almost leader or focus point of the tree. It, uh, these other two branches are in the background and they aren't quite as important as that front branch. And it does have some good deadwood in there and you know right here. And yeah everything's looking pretty good in that that front view there. So the next step I'm going to clean up the base of the tree. There's a lot of moss kind of growing in the root base. I want to clean that up before I start the repotting process. I'll just come in with my tweezers and start picking away this moss. Just to kind of see some of the surface roots, give me an idea of, you know, maybe what the root base is looking like now. Cedars like to grow lots of roots. When they're well watered and fed, they can grow quite, quite rapidly if that's what you want. Um, you know, if this tree was in a refinement stage, you wouldn't give it quite as much water and fertilizer. You'd try and keep the new foliage fairly compact and work on, you know, refining the tree rather than growing it. But for now, this tree's kind of in a, well, it's in a clip and grow phase where we let it grow wild, feed it well, and we cut it back hard and then it grows wild again and gets full and then we prune it back again so be repeating that process for many many years to come just getting rid of all this moss here it's getting a nice spread at the root base i'm liking that so this would be kind of the front of the tree here some good 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 surface roots I'm ready to begin the repotting process where we'll pot the tree over top of a rock and in the previous video of this tree the witch tree I I removed a lot of the roots in the bottom underneath the trunk to kind of get a you know a flat radial root base and so it should fit over top of that rock quite nicely I may have to remove a few more roots on the bottom but I kind of prepared it for the day where it would go over top of a rock so Let's get the tree out of the pot and see what the roots look like. All right, so here I go. I will grab the tree by the trunk, trying not to remove all that flaky bark. I'll just lift up like that. Here's a look at the roots that have grown in the soil. So I can tell that it's not jam packed full of roots that they'll comb out quite easily. They're kind of growing around the edges of the pot, probably because it's the warmest there. There's a good mat on the bottom, but you know, overall they look fairly evenly distributed. 
among the soil. There's roots on the top, roots on the bottom, and roots in the middle. That's what you want. I'll begin to comb out the roots now, starting in the middle and combing outwards in a radial pattern. Now, I should put a tray under this because I may have to reuse my soil. As I said, I'm kind of low on soil and all the stores are closed. So the only available option is to do order online and then do a curbside pickup at the store, which I guess I could do, but uh, I was finding this tray wasn't nearly big enough. So I went outside and I, I found another tray, a big fiberglass one right here. So I'll put that underneath the tree to collect all the soil. So let me do that. That there. There, that'll be big enough to comb it out. And I can keep combing then. Now there sure are a lot of fine fibrous roots in this soil. And that shows, you know, you've got a good bone size soil when the roots grow nice and fibrous like this. You get all these fine feeder roots that supply energy to the tree. And the tree grows well and healthy. While I'm combing these roots out, my new bicycle seat did come in yesterday. And I'll show you the video of that. Today, my new saddle arrived for my bicycle all the way from Birmingham, England. So I'm very excited to open it up and see what it looks like. Oh, I sure hope I like it. You know, I can't afford a Rolls Royce, but I can uh, afford the Rolls Royce of saddles. <laughs> and if you look at the prices of regular bicycle seats, like any premium seat is 100 to 200 dollars. And you know, they're not handmade in England by craftsmen. They're just mass produced on probably in China on some production line. So here it is, Brooks. Pretty cool box. It's got like a copper colored Brooks logo on it. It does slide out. Okay. Here we go. The big reveal. <laughs> Oh, look at that. There it is. It comes with a little wrench to adjust the tension on the seat. I got the honey colored saddle. And the reason I got the honey colored is that it kind of ages with, you know, use. It, it'll start turning a dark brown where it gets scuffed up. And, and it'll look more like an antique saddle in the future. So. Wow, it's, it's really cool. It says, timeless design since 1866. Made in England from vegetable tanned leather, which molds to fit your body shape as you ride. So that's pretty amazing. It takes a bit of time to break these saddles in. So in the old days, people used to take the saddle off their old bike and put the same saddle on their new bike. So it's all already broken in. All right, I'll get the saddle out now. I'll clip the plastic ties that hold it in. There's one. I think there is just one. Wow, look at those springs. Uh, there we go. So there it is. What a masterpiece. That's just beautiful. These springs are all made at the factory in Birmingham. They're all made on old machines from, you know, around the wartime. Every part of the saddle is made in England. The leather is all hand trimmed. Just amazing. Ah, that looks really good. You can buy spare parts for this entire saddle and all the saddles they make. So if you just want to order a new spring, you can do that. If you just want to order the rails, you can do that. You can even order the rivets. Some people take these saddles and they order the copper rivets and they replace the stainless ones or the plated ones with copper rivets. So you can kind of customize your saddle. That looks really cool. I like that. You can buy a little uh, tin of saddle conditioner and they recommend you rub it on underneath and on top, you know, every uh, couple of months just to keep it in good shape. Yeah, that looks really, 
That's amazing. So there's the tensioner bolt up front, and that provides a tension on the top of the saddle. So you can relax it or you can tighten it up. That feels really soft already. Yeah, that's going to be comfortable. And these springs will just be fantastic when you hit a bump. It'll just squish down. There's two straps on the back for your, you can buy little leather uh, spare tires and tool kit that goes in the back of your saddle. They attach to these little clips here. So that's pretty amazing. So this is a Genuine Leather Brooks B66. So that's the model number B66. And it's designed for comfort. It's not the thin kind of racing seats. And I mainly use this bike for delivering papers. I, uh, I really enjoy riding around delivering all the papers. So yeah, it should be good for that job. The next step for my Brooks saddle is to install it on the bicycle. It's still snowing out today, so I'm going to turn the greenhouse into a bike garage. Just squeeze it in here like that. Oh, there's lots of room in here. Now I've got to get the old seat off, so I've got a one quarter Whitworth wrench. That should fit it. Fits it perfectly. Now, that is off. So it just comes off as one unit. I'm just looking at the old saddle. It looks very good quality. It has the same adjustment screw up front. Just they made it out of plastic instead of leather. It's just too bad. So here's my seat tube. Now, I think I want to adjust this up a little higher if I have enough height. So I'm going to check that. I'll see if I can get the seat post up a little higher. I don't know if it'll even move. I also noticed that the top of this tube isn't quite round. You can see it's kind of an oval shape. It looks like it's being squeezed in severely on the sides. Another thing I noticed is that this is a constant diameter. On most seat posts, they have a larger diameter at the bottom and then it tapers up at the top. And the seat goes on that top part like that and it kind of sits so it can't lower down because it it gets larger in diameter but this one it it could slide right down because you know there's not that difference in diameter so i might have to try and look around and maybe do something with that seat post either put a collar around it or something to fix that problem i've got some vice grips on the seat post i put a cloth to protect it let's see if it comes loose Oh yeah, there it goes. So I'm going to take it right out. If I can get it out. There it goes. Wow, look at that. It's weird. It has a tapered end on it. Never seen that before in my life. I guess that just makes it easy to fit it in there. I don't know. All right, let's get the vice grips off. So the seat post can't go up much higher. I think it was, it was down to here. So it could go up, you know, a little bit, but not a whole lot. So I might try and find a different seat post for this bike. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that originally the seat post went in this way and the seat went on top. And then, you know, the seat wouldn't go down any lower than that taper. So. I think someone's changed it around and put a more modern seat on it. That's why it's plastic up top here. So what I need to do is I need to find a seat post that goes, that is this diameter, goes a larger diameter, and then stops back down to the original diameter again. That might be hard to do. I might have to make a piece myself. I had to look around to see if I could find a seat post that would fit one that's round and I didn't have any. So I'm going to take this down to the bike store and uh, see if I can get a longer one because I need a little more length in this, you know, to get my seat up higher. And I'd like a round one. This one's all squished in on the end. So I think I need a new seat post. 
I went to the uh, bike shop and I ordered a new seat post. It's longer than this one, the same diameter. It'll be round anyway. So that'll take about a week to come in. So I'm going to put it back together using the new seat and the old seat post and try it out. Uh, that'll have to do me. I'll just leave that set up on until the new seat post comes in and then we'll transfer that over. Now I want to get it down probably to about here. Right there I'll do. That'll do, I think. Go try it out. Everything's tightened up now. Ready to ride. All right, I'm gonna have my first sit on the saddle. Here it goes. Ooh. <laughs> Feels good. It's not as hard as I thought it would be. Yeah, it feels really nice. Comfortable. Yeah, like that. All right, take it for a test drive. Well, that's really comfortable. All these stories about rock hard brook saddles at first. This one feels really good. It's nice and soft and feels way better than the old one. Well, I am really happy with that brook saddle. It's comfortable right off the start. The style suits the bike really well. Kind of very old school. Yeah, happy I uh, happy I got that model. The Brooks B66, just awesome. Really cool. Yeah, so that's it until I get the new seat post next week. That's it for the roll fast bicycle. I think I've got this root system to the point where I can put it in the tub and wash all the roots, get all the soil out of it to get it ready for root pruning. All right, so I'll, I'll take it to the uh, wash station now. All right, here I go. Get this in the water. All right, let's go back inside and get these roots pruned. I've got the tray nice and clean. So now I'll try and set the root system on top of the tray, spreading it out. There's some long roots in there. Something like that. Oh, don't tip over a tree. Okay, that is getting there. Now I'm going to trim off all these really long roots. They're just way too long. So I'll come in here with the curved scissors and just kind of prune to a profile. Now I am planting this over a rock, but you know, this is just way, way too long out here. I've got to look at the roots. You can see right here, this side, there's a big thick woody root. And that must have been a major root that I pruned off last time. So there's a look at that, you know, that big root. And I've got to see if there's any roots coming off it. There is. See, there's, there's live roots coming off all around it. But I could definitely prune that pointy part off because that's 
kind of hitting the bottom of the pot. So I'll come in and I'll just prune that off here. Like that. Now I've got a few roots sticking up here and because this is planted on a rock, I don't want roots look like they're going in midair. That looks kind of ridiculous. So, and for those roots, I'll come in with these knob cutters and get a nice flush cut like that. And then there's one here and just dead roots anyway. There's one out the side here. Get rid of that one too, like that. And then there's a dead root here. It's a little high in the root base, so I'm going to get rid of that also. I gotta check. This one's dead also, so I'll get rid of that. Do a little combing in that area, make sure I got all my live roots at the top here. Because this tree is planted on a rock, I've got to make sure I've got the bottom of the tree combed out and taken down as flat as possible. You can see there's a few roots in here that are kind of crossing across the center of the root base, so they need to be pruned off. So I'll get rid of those. This will help the tree kind of grip the rock so it doesn't look like it's floating above the rock. It looks like the roots have actually grown in across the rock. The rock was probably covered in moss and the roots grow in the moss and then reach down to the soil and over the years they thicken up. I see another dead root down here. There's a big thick woody one there. I'm gonna get rid of that. Like that. So there's kind of the height of my surface roots and my tree sitting above the rock may be still a little too high. I may have to get rid of some more of these roots down below here. Just take a few of this, the remains of some woody roots off here just to get the tree to sit flatter. That's getting better. I think that's quite good. I think, you know, that's not bad. I'll try it on top of the rock. So here's my rock and I don't know, I'll have to pick up front for this rock. So here's the rock and it's pretty flat on top. Underneath, if that were to be the top, It looks more like kind of on top of a, a cliff if there's water down here, but I don't know if I want that. There is a crack in the rock through here, so it may eventually split into two pieces, which is no problem. But I, I think I like, this is the top of the rock. Um, I'm going to rotate it around and see if I find the best side of the rock. Well, I think this is definitely the most interesting side. Um, probably something like that. And I may level it out a bit with soil. But yeah, probably something like that. So let's put the tree on top now. Something like that. And these roots would all be growing down around the rock. I think that's good. I think the next step is to get it in the bonsai pot and start playing around with the composition. I'll start by getting some screens and a layer of soil in the bottom of the pot to kind of bring the uh, rock up to the right height. I've got my drainage screens in place. So now I'll start adding soil on the one side where the rock will be. So this will be a land water penging. Uh, the tree comes forward quite a bit, so I might want to rotate this rock 
back just a bit. I'll show you the view from the front, kind of get an idea of the initial composition. So there's a look at it from the front, and I, I've got I think I want the tree tilted this way more. So I may have to change the angle of the rock a bit. Yeah, that looks better. So it tilts and then goes straight up here. I think overall the tree is a little too far to the right. I think I've got to bring it to the left a bit to kind of, there's too much empty space here. That's better. I could go a little further. That's looking good. I'm kind of liking that. I'll fill in some more soil down here, kind of uh, get the pot a little fuller. I've got another bucket of soil. Before I fill it in, I think I should comb all the roots out, getting them all arranged on the rock, and then I'll kind of start filling in around the rock a bit. So I'll put my bucket aside and I'll start on these roots. And the idea is to get the roots to kind of grip, you know, be kind of growing alongside the rock as much as possible. Make sure all those roots are in. All right, I'll start filling some soil in now. So I'll kind of stretch the roots against the rock and put the soil in to kind of hold the roots in place. Like that. And the rock will be partially buried in this planting and we can always raise it up later on in the tree's life. This is just to initially get it all, all the roots established. Some of the soil was frozen outside. It, uh, again, it's still snowing. Um, you know, this April showers bring May flowers thing, it's just not working this spring. It's, we're getting April snow. This April snow has got to go. So it's looking good. I'm, I'm going to start going around kind of the back side here, getting my roots against the rock, filling in soil. The soil is quite good. It has pine bark in it. It's got lava rock. It's got a bit of everything. Cedar should like this soil. Put my spinning tree bonsai turntable down. The planting on top. Now I can spin it around to the back side easily. Okay, again, I'll hold the roots against the rock like that. Put my soil up against it, kind of holding them tightly to the rock. All right, so I've kind of gone around the rock now. So I'll begin filling in this front part with soil, which will be my water section. So my water, I want the level just below the lip of the pot when I put sand on it. So the sand will represent water. So I have a lot of roots exposed up here and I'll need to, you know, put soil around here and moss and then slowly over the years I'll remove it and you'll just get the roots growing over the rock eventually. But you've got to do everything in stages. All right, I've got some more soil and I can start placing it into the root base up here. Now, the next step, you can see the trees just kind of sitting on top of the rock. So the next step, I want to get some stones and I, I place them against the roots all around the tree and that holds it on top of the rock. And then I can pile, you know, more soil up and it makes a really stable planting. So I'll find a bunch of stones to put around the tree. Before I start putting the rocks around here and getting too much soil on, I'll show you the composition. So I think you're seeing the front right about there. I'll show you it all the way around. And back to the front. All right, I'll start placing these rocks around here. 
So I'm going to start with a big one at the back here. Maybe right, maybe right there. And I've got a big one I can put at the front here. One around the back. And I think I need some more stones to go around the front here. Yeah, I've got a couple more stones here. I can put one here. So I'll just get a little more soil to cover these roots up. Put a stone up there. That'll hold that root down. Start getting some soil up here. I'll have to make sure all this soil is worked into the root base nicely. Now there's a lot of different methods of doing this root over rock. This is just the way I do it. And again, I don't wire the trees to the rock because then you get wire marks going across the roots. All right, so that's all being held in place nicely. The next step is to water the planting. And all this will be taken away eventually, probably in a year or two. All right, here I go with the water. I put some moss on top of the soil here. So in a heavy rainstorm, it wouldn't wash all the soil away. It'll just kind of hold it in place a little better. And I think that's it for this planting. Um, I've just got to let the tree grow more. I've got to get all these roots to thicken up over top of that rock. And then eventually I'll be able to peel away all this surface layer and kind of expose the roots and the rock. So it should look quite good in a couple of years. With my witch's tree all planted and ready to go, I can concentrate on my little cedar spirit tree next. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me today in the Bonsai Zone.